Welcome to Electronic Specifier Insights, the podcast for electronics engineers. I'm your host, Paige West. In today's episode, I speak with Ben White, CEO of Flux Technology. We speak about the latest innovations in the field of 1550 nanometer infrared sensors, and in particular, Flux's noiseless in-gas avalanche photodiodes, which are revolutionizing applications such as rangefinders, LiDAR systems, and optical fiber test equipment. Ben also tells me a little bit about how the company was founded and its plans for future growth. We hope you enjoy this episode. Let's get started. Electronic Specifier. Okay, so hello everyone and welcome back to Electronic Specifier Insights. I'm pleased today to be joined by Ben White, who is the CEO of Flux Technologies. So uh, thanks for joining us, Ben. And how are you today? Are you well? Yeah, I'm great, thank you. And thanks so much for inviting me onto your show. Oh, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, I guess so. How far do we go back? So for me, I think as far back as I can remember, um, I was always been drawn to engineering designing things from a young age. So I think I was destined to be an engineer and that's really shaped my decisions through school. Then fortunately for me, did A-levels and I found a teacher who was incredibly passionate about electronics. And I think if you if you ever have one of those inspiring teachers, they, they can really make a huge difference to your choices and, and how you think about the world. And so I went on to uni to study electronics, um, loved it and got exposure to semiconductor devices and also met some of the professors who were lecturing at the university at the time. And went on to do a PhD. And this is all relevant because in about 2019, after I finished my PhD, the group that I was working had a, a breakthrough in a particular area, and that was in infrared detectors. And at that time, timing was perfect too, because there was a up, huge uptake in the technology for communications, but also robotics, and particularly autonomous vehicles back in 2019. Infrared detectors were used for a technology called LIDAR. And so we had this breakthrough at the university, and we'd, we'd published papers before, and it's kind of a bit flat after you publish a paper, you think, what now? And so this time we could really see that there was a, a real world application for this technology that we developed. And so we created Flux to commercialize it and take it out into the real world and I guess exploit its impact. Fantastic. We certainly need more teachers like that in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so following on from what you said then, Ben, I'd love to chat with you today about the latest innovations in the field of 1550 nanometer infrared sensors. I know that your your noiseless in-gas avalanche photodiodes are, are currently revolutionizing applications such as rangefinders, LiDAR systems, and, and optical fiber test equipment. But before we, we sort of deep dive into that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Flux technology and, and what it is you guys do? Because as you sort of said, it, it was founded in, in 2020, right? As a spin out from Sheffield University. Yeah, so I guess I can start with a bit of background about infrared detectors and Really, infrared detectors really power a lot of the world around us. So every time you go on the internet, a data sent over optical fibers. And at the end of every optical fiber in the world, there's an infrared detector that turns the light in the fiber back into an electrical signal. So if you've got fiber to the home, people have probably got a detector in their home. They all they also power face ID that works with infrared light. Um, and a huge number of things in between use infrared detectors. And so by our calculations, about 500 million of them are sold each year for comms and yet yeah, sensing systems. So one of those strange technologies that no one's ever heard of, but are incredibly important in the world. And so we've developed a new type of infrared detector that delivers much higher sensitivity than the way that everybody else builds these at the moment. And that higher sensitivity is really useful because it improves the system performance. And so it makes things, if you're a vision system, it allows you to see further, or if you're a communication system and you allows you to send more data down optical fibers, improving bandwidth and giving users better internet experience, essentially. Fantastic. So since its founding then, how has sort of Flux technology evolved in terms of its its product offerings and, and the technological advancements? Yeah, so at Flux, we've developed a new compound semiconductor material called AlGasB or Aluminium Gallium Arsenide and Antimony. It's a bit of a mouthful. And so really the first few years of Flux was all about trying to develop the technology and build what, what people usually call a minimum viable product. And so the earliest form of the product that you can get to customers and try and find your product market fit. And so the first few years of Flux up until last year was very technical, technical de-risking. And then we figured out how to make this. We have overcome some of the technical barriers and we can turn it into a product called Aura, which we launched in 2024. 
And since then, we've really been accelerating very quickly. So we launched our first products and we've started to address markets by selling product into the market, but also onto the next two product lines that we're looking to build and launch over the next few years to address a wider range of like communication systems, but also sensing systems too. I'm interested to, to hear if you, did you find any challenges sort of transitioning from the academic research side of it to forming a, a commercial enterprise? Oh, quite a few, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I think we could probably split them out into a few different buckets of challenges. Um, and there are the main ones I would say are te technology to start with. So what we're doing is very technically complex and no one else has done this in the world yet. So we had, we were kind of entering uncharted waters. And so there was quite a few technical challenges we can solve. And luckily we had really great people on the team, lots of creative thinking to find ways, new ways of solving these the technical problems. Um, then the team aspect that we're an academic spin out. So we spun out from the University of Sheffield. And I think we we're quite in balance to start with in terms of very strong academically, but not too strong on the commercial acumen or mm -hmm. any of the other skills that you need to run a business. And so balancing that team out was was tough. But also if you one of the things I think we got really, really right. So early on, I found a mentor called David Crisp, who's had five different startups. Um, and exited them and then we built out the team from there in terms of sales marketing finance operations and it's kind of flowed from there really mm. and then I think the final one very early on was budget that usually when you go into create a startup the first few years in particular you're, you're strapped for cash and so trying to do really complicated things semiconductors on a shoestring budget and it must be hard to try and pitch to potential investors the work you guys are doing as well especially if these investors don't have sort of a technological background absolutely yeah communication was a big factor too that communication in academia is all about usually it's a technical audience and i think that's changing now mm. but communicating with a much broader range of stakeholders and like trying to communicate what the value of our technology is and why anybody would want to buy one in <laughs> like as few words as possible and what about um sheffield university then how did they support you sort of in the spin out process and what role did did that play in in the early stages of the company yeah so i guess we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for shepherd uni I'll, I'll say that to start with and and so they, they were very very supportive in in their own way in that early on i got a, a fellowship with the royal academy of engineering an enterprise fellowship and so that allowed me quite a lot of training and that was hosted at the university and so I'm very grateful to them for that and also that a lot of the tools that we use for R&D are based in the university too. Um, but what I would say in the last few years at Sheffield Uni, we've really seen a transformation in their approach to creating spin-ups. And that's been really inspiring and absolutely transformed the startup scene in Sheffield too. There's some really exciting companies in Sheffield now that are raising quite a lot of capital and scaling really quickly. And the university, that kind of change of mindset and a few new people there have, have really transformed what's happened in the city. Yeah, that's great to hear. Okay, so um, let's deep dive into the the technology now. Then, um, so you've you've covered some of these points, but but what motivated the development of of your noiseless in gas APD, and and what specific challenges in photo detection does it address? Yeah, so we created Flux really back in two thousand and nineteen. Our kind of thesis was that we could see that machines and robots were going to be part of everybody's daily life. Um, and the big barrier to adoption that we're still facing now is, is safety that for especially for autonomy. But any time you put a machine in charge of someone's life, the safety standards aren't you don't have to be just as good as a human. You have to be 100 times better. Mm -hmm. and probably the aviation industry is a good example of that. And so we saw an opportunity for for sensing within that sensing is going to be a key um, way that machines understand their surroundings so they can make decisions and ultimately be safe. So. Our technology allows machines to see with much higher clarity, but um, and then communication systems, communication is a big part of it too. It allows like networks to communicate with high data rates. And so what our detector does is that it gives you much higher sensitivity or signal to noise ratio. And that's really important because if you're a machine or a robot, it allows you to improve your pixel density so you can produce images with much higher clarity and then pick out objects or identify objects that you couldn't see before. And so for robotics, that, that's really key. 
also we want to see this technology reach every application and so it needs to be affordable and affordability is one of the other big barriers for this machine machine vision software that we're working on at flux that it's too expensive you, you can't afford to put it on every car or every delivery train at the moment and one of the reasons is is because some of the components that go inside it are far too expensive and so what we can do is that we can our high sensitivity allows you to use lower cost components particularly on the laser to save you a lot of money on your bill of materials but also reduce the system size so you can make the system smaller and cheaper fantastic so how how would you say that your technology differentiates itself from sort of the traditional in gas apds in especially in terms of of performance and noise reduction yeah so in gas apds or this type of infrared detector technology called in gas apd has been around for a very long time i think it was invented in like the 70s but when we approached about the naughty, so the early 2000s, the technology had really started to mature. And so since then, there's been really little progress in terms of improvement in sensitivity and also speed. They've kind of squeezed out everything out of it they can. And so we've got a radical new approach at Flux. And the thing that we do differently that everybody else doesn't is that we use a, a very new semiconductor material, this Algas Intimidy that we've developed at Flux. And we build all of our detectors using this material whereas everybody else uses the mature technology that has reached its performance limit today. And that's how we're able to leverage performance advantage over all of our competition. And can you explain the the underlying technology that enables the, the noiseless performance of your technology? Yeah, absolutely. So this type of detector that we make is called an avalanche photodiode. Um, it's an APD. Um, and they detect light. The thing that makes an APD special is that it has internal amplification. So you detect a signal and within the device it has amplification. So it amplifies a signal and gives you a, a larger signal at the output. So noise is a really key factor in all of this. And for maybe the audience that aren't particularly technical, noise is your background noise, unwanted signal. So it's the, the thing you see when you turn on your TV without it being plugged in, like crackly. And it's Within electronics, it's kind of the background level that you, you can't detect below. So noise is a key, a key performance metric of any detector. And what noise really as a measure is, is how deterministic a process is. And so we use uh, a new semiconductor material called Algas B, and it has really low noise amplification in the material, meaning that it's highly deterministic. And so for us, if you, if you put one electron in this material, you get 10 out. And it's very predictable that if you do it a thousand times, the distribution around getting 10 out is very low. So maybe occasionally you'll get nine, maybe occasionally you'll get 11, but on average it's 10. Um, with other materials, if you put one electron in um, and your average is 10, there's a huge distribution around that. And so sometimes you might get five out, rarely you might get 10, sometimes you might get 20. It's, it's pretty unpredictable and that creates noise. And so we've swapped that material out and developed a new material called Algas B that's highly deterministic. And that's how we're able to improve the sensitivity. So what does that mean for um, for areas such as uh, laser range finders or LIDAR or fiber sensing? What, what are the key advantages there? Yeah, so for these optical systems, the, the currency or the, the key important metric is signal to noise ratio. So how big is your signal compared to your noise? And so for us, we can give you much higher signal to noise ratio through higher gain. And if you're a system manufacturer for, for example, laser range finding, as you've given the example there, it means that you can see further. So your range is increased or you can operate at higher temperatures. So you can you can operate up to 95 degrees C instead of 65, for example, or you can build cheaper systems. So you can emit lower laser power. And so you can use a cheaper, lower cost, smaller laser and still maintain your performance in your system. So there's lots of ways to trade off that advantage. And that's one of our unique things we can do at Flux is that companies always have a problem. It's, it varies where that problem is, but you can usually solve it with higher sensitivity. Do you foresee a, a particular industry um, having the greatest demand for this technology? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I think we're discovering new applications all the time at the moment, and it's incredibly diverse that Infrared sensors power an enormous amount of applications. Um, I think if I had to pick one, the team like challenges and probably more unusual things. So at the moment, we've got a project with the European Space Agency and Airbus to develop yes. a, a space qualified 
detector for satellite communications. So I think they're all quite inspired by the idea of sending some of these detectors to space. But I think for me, I'm really excited about robotics and mobility. And so I'd love to see a car driving down the road that's powered by one of our detectors, for example. Mm, yeah, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. and, and speaking of the future then, what future innovations in, in IR sensing technology are you most excited about and why? So this field is evolving really quickly now. It's it's so important for the future of yeah, some really high growth markets. So for communications, so as AI becomes more integrated into our daily lives as well, people's bandwidth is going up enormously. So for getting higher bandwidth from data centers to cities, to people's homes, that's an area that's going to experience huge growth over the next few years that we're we're really working on at the moment. And in terms of R&D, we don't have a product for that yet, but we've got some really exciting prototypes that we're, we'll be launching into the world next year, I expect. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, we've got a really exciting product roadmap for sensing. And so for... For LiDAR, which is a, a technology that enables machines to see in 3D, that technology has evolved enormously over the last five years and will continue to evolve too. We've got a really exciting product roadmap for sensing and LiDAR systems that will enable these systems to keep getting better, keep getting cheaper and address a much wider range of applications too. Mm, excellent. So where, where would you like to see um, the company in the next five years? In the next five years? So at the moment... We've launched our first product this year, so Aura, um, and that's really focused on high, high value, high performance sensing applications. At the moment, what we're working on at Flux is scaling that technology to address a much broader range of applications. And so over the next few years, we'll be launching additional product lines that, that can go into high volume. And so we can get it into a much broader range of applications. So for us, it's all about we're into scale mode now. We've proven out the technology and we're looking to develop variants of our current product for new markets excellent wow i wish you the best of luck and i'll have to get you back in the next five years to see uh, to see where you're at <laughs> absolutely i'd love to thanks very much okay so before we wrap up then ben is there anything else that you'd like to add not particularly other than if anybody has got any questions we've got some great material on our website and if you use the contact us form um we'll be in contact and love to discuss any application with you Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you um, and learning more about the technology as well, because I think from what you've said, this this technology goes a little bit underappreciated because it, it has such a big impact in, in the world that we live in. Thanks so much, Paige. It's been an absolute pleasure. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to this latest episode of Electronic Specifier Insights. Don't forget to subscribe to the series to keep up to date with our newest guests, and do share with fellow colleagues, friends and family who may be interested in the latest news from the electronics industry. Electronic Specifier